Time to get serious, though, as the grid is cleared ahead of the last big race of the day, the Cookstown 100. We're all set then for what promises to be a corker and hopefully less controversial superbike race than we saw earlier today. As away we go. Riding with Ryan Farquhar and his four-year-old superstock machine, looking back at Guy Martin and Michael Dunlop with Adrian Archibald threatening, and William Dunlop slipping to the back. Well, he has elected to ride his 600 in this race, but it's Farquhar who leads them into Gordon for the first time, but who will follow in second? It looks like Guy Martin with Michael Dunlop slotting into third. Adrian Archibald and John Burroughs squabbling over fourth as we get on the power with Michael Dunlop. Both he and Guy Martin on superbike machines, Farquhar on his superstock, which doesn't have the top end of the other bikes. But then again, this circuit is something of a leveller. It certainly doesn't have the long, wide open roads of the triangle course at the northwest. This track imparts much more stop start. Farquhar into Mackney, being pursued by Martin and Dunlop, and then it's Archibald, Burroughs, and Pearson. We're riding with John Burroughs, the Cookstown BE Racing Suzuki. Once owned by the TAS boys. Farquhar airborne. So to the chasing pack. William Dunlop at the back and flapping his wings. Farquhar, Martin, Dunlop, and perhaps a hint of a gap opening between all three. Oh, John Burroughs locks up, leaving a trail of rubber behind on the road. Slows down in time. Well, Michael Dunlop tearing toward Gorton. Two targets ahead of him. Agent Archibald close behind as well to keep him occupied. They tip it to Gorton, and no one close enough to pull a pass, but another solid performance so far from Archibald on the superbike. That's the view looking back from Ryan Farquhar with Guy Martin in hot pursuit. Farquhar, or his bike, suffered no ill effects following his tumble on this machine during practice where he banged his knee, plus bent the bottom yoke of the bike. Now we see a replay of John Burroughs' moment at Orator. Very much heart in mouth time. Well, certainly held his breath. And this is the same moment, but viewed from Burroughs' bike. And Guy Martin certainly closing on Farquhar. Half a second at the end of lap two, and it looks closer this time. As they approach Craig Mount, Farquhar could well have a job in his hands, thwarting the attentions of Guy Martin. I think we're going to be talking tenths of a second at the end of this lap. And it's looking increasingly likely, or it looks increasingly like, I should say, a two-way scrap between this pair to win the big race of the day. So take off another lap then as we look back from Ryan Farquhar. Guy Martin chasing hard. Here they come then into Gorton. Michael Dunlop some distance back in third place. As Guy Martin, left foot off the peg momentarily, blipping the throttle down into Gordon. But it won't work unless he gets the speed out of the turn. And we'll have to see whether he disappears or stays with Ryan Farquhar. And he looks to be staying. So Guy Martin certainly closed in on that last lap. Oh, Farquhar taking out to the edge slightly. As we scream down towards the next turn, slowing down, chuck it into the right, into Magny. So Guy Martin then, right with Ryan Farquhar, game on at the front. And certainly he does seem to be a lot closer this lap, so I think at the end of this lap the time will be right down. As we look back from Ryan Farquhar towards Guy Martin again, one of the most spectacular parts of the course. Front wheels go light. So then, what will be the difference between them this time? They look certainly a lot closer on the road than they did last time around. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, two tenths the advantage this time as Guy Martin harms Ryan Farquhar's advantage. And here he comes, looking to outbreak his rival into Gorton. But, oh, maybe he's applied too much power as he squirms his way down the slip road. Farquhar negotiates the turn, but that is that from Guy Martin. He threw the dice and lost, manages to keep it upright. He's not hit anything, so he can rejoin. But now it's all about time on the bike and no longer thoughts of getting a race win. Here we go again. He tries to use the extra superbike power of the Suzuki to get past Farquhar, but he couldn't slow it down in time. Michael Dunlop around McAdoo then. 
chips his way across the bike. And here comes Farquhar into Mackney. On board with William Dunlop, who's elected to have more time on the 600 bike, which he's riding in this race instead of the 1,000cc. Obviously not happy with it after the Supersport race. David Morgan into McAdoo, ahead of Michael Sweeney at the end of lap three. That was the battle of a tenth place, but they may be up on Martin now, who lost time. Farquhar far from happy at the end of the first Superbike race, and maybe that's providing the extra 1% he seems to have found over the rest of the field. We're back with William, who's been passed by Guy Martin, who must have lost around 15 seconds following that overshoot at Gorton. Dunlop on the less powerful 600 bike and looking to find that extra second a lap he was losing out on in the Supersport race. I suspect John Burroughs will have Guy Martin on his case. Indeed, he has. As the Taiko Suzuki rider looks to pass, and there's the difference between a new Suzuki Superbike and the one Burroughs is riding, which is Bruce Anstey's old bike, which secured the lap record at Dundrod. Martin taking a wide line again, late on the brakes once more, but not as late as last time around. It's a brand new 2012 spec Honda for William Dunlop this year, certainly in both Supersport and Superbike, and that's why he's putting the miles in on this machine. And Burroughs splashing out on the former TAS Suzuki, basically the same as Guy Martin's Superbike, but without any of the fancy electronics. It's certainly got some history, and Burroughs hoping it will give him some great results again this year, just like he enjoyed last year at Killer Lane. It's results you're looking for, though. Ryan <laughs> Farquhar knows about to get them, doesn't he? We're riding back with William Dunlop, though. How hard he is on the brakes there. The front end really sinking into the road as they go through Mackney. And come out of Mackney, of course. Now, this is where William might just lose out a little bit. You can see the superbike ahead of him just pulling away. But certainly around the corners, the 600 is pretty much the equal of the other guys. Here comes Michael Dunlop then. Flips the right, then the left. Just moves his backside across the back of the seat just to transfer his weight to get round the corner. And then it's tucked in behind the shield as they go down to Gorton. Hit the brakes. Oh, scrubbing off as much speed as he can. Perfect, though, as here comes William Dunlop. Again, right behind John Burroughs. His corner craft exactly the same, almost. But he should lose out. Oh, William Dunlop looking for a line, and certainly this is where he'll lose out now. Watch John Burroughs on the former TAS Suzuki pull away. That's the 1,000cc Superbike pulling away. William Dunlop was trying to stay with him on the 600. But now as they go into Gordon, Dunlop should be able to catch up again on the brakes, and he does. So again, through here, they're scratching a little bit between Gorton and McAdoo and Mackney. And Williams should be able to get a tow around here. He might even, might just even be able to push his front wheel, certainly if not past, but alongside John Burroughs. Well, it's damage limitation really for Guy Martin now, isn't it? It's just more miles on the superbike. Ryan Farquhar, totally in command out front. Michael Dunlop won't give up then. Back with William Dunlop, and he'll lose a little bit of power here to John Burroughs, but he may catch him up again by the time they get to Craig Mount. Here's the battle for eighth. Jamie Hamilton with Davey Morgan and Michael Sweeney for company. Guy Martin again opting for the wider approach into Gorton, squaring off the turn and almost coming together with Michael Pearson, who raises his hand. Two into one certainly didn't go. Hamilton, Morgan and Sweeney still joined together, and I suspect they'll enjoy chatting about this one at the end of the day. And here's the replay of Guy Martin and Pearson, and proof that two certainly does not go into one.
Bokor on his own out front at Magny. How many times have we seen that over the years? There's really only one line through McAdoo as well. Both men take that option. The pass has to happen just before the turn. Farquhar completely in the groove and coming up to slower traffic. Oh, Pearson perhaps a little hot into Mackney. Guy Martin breathing down his neck. Michael de Kupel, who had a massive crash on this circuit last year, just ahead of Ryan Farquhar, who is going to win the Cookstown 100 yet again. Here he goes across the line, and that's the hat trick for Farquhar. Delight for him, a good four seconds ahead of Michael Dunlop at the finish. Here's Adrian Archibald, this will be third place for him, a super result for, dare I say, the veteran rider. So a great result then for Adrian Archibald as he crosses the line, but delight for Ryan Farquhar. And Michael Pearson holds Guy Martin off, Michael Pearson finished in fourth place ahead of Guy Martin, whereas I thought it was going to be guys. Well, there's the difference in body language between first and second place. Both men very much wear their hearts on their sleeves. Farquhar certainly worth a punt in the Super Stock category at the Northwest for the likes of Michael Dunlop and possibly Guy Martin will be looking for improvements from their Superbikes in the next couple of weeks.